Hello my friend, how are you doing today? I am okay myself. It has been a while. I know you haven't seen me for a long time. I've been so busy from doing different type of work, but I've missed you and I'm so happy to be here today. The main reason I'm here, you've seen the title of this video, a lot of people don't know how to use their brushes. Summertime, a lot of people are going out more. They've brought some wig for me and uh, some of the wig have been tangled. And I think with the right brush, it would have been easy for them to fix it. So that's why I am doing this video today so that you can know it's not everything you take to the salon. Yes, salon is good, but sometimes knowing the right thing to use at home we help you. Let's jump into this video and then let's see what's going to happen. Think that there are only two kinds of brushes, flat ones and round ones, and that the different shapes are just for decoration, but it's not true. The different shapes and sizes are to get your hair to do different things. So if you want your hair to behave, you need to pick the right brush. Rat tail combs are really all about the rat tail side, not the comb side. The rat tail side here is amazing for parting your hair, sectioning your hair. Anytime that you need a really nice, clean line, this is your best option. Nothing will give you a sharper line than this rat scallion. Let's say you want to part right here. Cool. You're going to use a dresser like hairstylist. We use this rat tail comb a lot, or maybe you are a braider. We use it a lot to have like the clean part side here it'll give you a super straight line regular combs are super straightforward they're kind of like your all-purpose comb they can do a whole bunch of different things pretty well we have one of these at every station in my salon and it's really only for one thing and that is flat ironing hair when you flat iron yes so that's the flat ironing comb because some people they use the wrong comb especially like when they have kink in hair they use the wrong comb as well so when you want the hair to be very straight, like glass straight, you put it underneath the straightener and then that's what you use this kind of comb for. Thank you, my guy. Really important that your hair stays straight for a long time. You need to give your hair three days rest before you use heat again. You cannot be using heat every day or else you're gonna torture your hair. What you wanna do is use this to lock. Not touch her, it will fall down. And another thing, people say heat protector, it, yes, it's good. If you keep on doing it, it's still going to damage your hair. Spray your heat protector on the hair, then kind of blow dry it in and use the straightener. But as he said, not every day. It's not about straightener, it's just about comb. But I just want to make sure that. Wide tooth combs are also pretty cool. With wide tooth combs, there's a huge mistake that even some stylists make, and that's using it to detangle your hair. You never want to detangle your hair with a comb. If you do and you aren't paying attention, or maybe you're just like going really fast, and there's a... Excuse me, you're only talking about Caucasian hair. He's talking about Caucasian hair, so many white people hair. So he said, don't use this comb to detangle your hair. So this video, I'm doing it in the both ways. So we need to like know different type of ways. You have straight hair like this, it's tangled. One of these brushes is your friend. It detangles the hair, it's called Demi brush. Quite very expensive, this little brush is almost about 20 something pound. I'll put everything down in the description for you. So. If your hair, you have like a kink in hair, meaning you have afro hair, you have to use this kind of comb to detangle your hair. Hold it, comb, 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 comb. So what he's talking about, now he's talking about like that type of hair, but I'm talking of everybody type of hair. And in there, this comb is going to get caught and there's a good chance it's going to rip right through your hair and cause breakage when it hits that knot. Not that long ago, my mom actually asked me why she never sees me using one of these wide tooth combs in one of my videos. And I told her, well, you don't do black people hair. <laughs> That's why you're not using it. If you do black people, you will know. Nobody will tell you. You know you need to use it. Because it catches the knots and it can break your hair. And she's like, oh, I use one every morning. My own mother was detangling her hair with one of these guys. Shame on my house for not- Shame on you guys! <laughs> you didn't lecture your mom. Not that, I'm telling you. Even we, uh, uh, professional, 
sometimes we tell people don't do this mistake and we catch ourselves doing it but yeah moral of the story get your mother a proper detangling brush but what kind of detangling brush you ask there's a couple to choose from we'll go over which one is best for you because you cannot skip this step this is the one type of brush that this is what you've been waiting for this is what this video is about okay i will explain to you laying his play let's see because i'm just watching this video like you as well i've not watched it before i saw the title and it's a fantastic hairstylist i'm like I need to react to it and let my people know what's going on. One must have and use on a daily basis. If you're used to detangling your hair with a comb, this is gonna be really cool for you. Every Christmas, my salon co-founder Leslie makes a backpack for needy kids or kids who were pulled out of an abusive home or something like that and they have nothing. It has clothes, toys, a toothbrush, stuff like that. Good. She always puts a detangling brush in there. That's how important this is. Tangle Teaser is your beginner brush. These bristles are short and small. You really couldn't do any damage with this even if you tried. You don't need any skills or anything like that. The main thing you'll notice with detangling brushes is that the bristles are flexible. They're not hard. That's to save your hair from getting ripped out if you turn into a knot. It's just gonna flex right out and continue going down your hair. This is great for beginners that are still learning proper brushing habits. You can give this to your daughter and feel pretty safe that almost nothing bad can happen, but you should still probably keep an eye on it. The downside to this is that it doesn't do very much in the first place. The bristles are so short and small, they really don't get into the hair, they don't detangle very well, so it makes everything harder a wet brush. There's a reason you will never see a stylist with a tangle teaser, and if you do, get out of that chair and run away as fast as you possibly can. And just to be clear, because I've seen some comments, wet brushes are not brushes that are wet. Wet brush is the name of the brand, is the type of brush, and this is your main type of brush for almost everything. Detangling in the morning on dry hair, detangling wet hair after you get out of the shower. You can even take it in the shower if you want to be extra. It's also great for spreading product evenly throughout your hair. These are really cheap and there's really no reason to get a knockoff even though those work too. But last time I checked, these were like less than $10 a target. And by the way, these are paddle brushes. I'm not skipping paddle brushes. It's basically one's an oval, one's a square. One more thing, I deal with a lot of wigs. And wigs and uh, hair on your hair is a little bit different because the wig does not have, it's not on the scalp anymore. It become a little bit dry, it gets tangled, and uh, it's a lot of maintenance. That's where this comes in, the magic brush. This brush, you will thank me for it. This brush, I'm going to show you, there are two types of brush. Don't get it twisted, okay? This, I don't know if I can zoom into it. This is the fake one. And this is the real one. I didn't know until someone gave me this. The bristle on this, you can see, is circular. Circular. Why this one is all over. So this will not do anything. If you have something like this, straight away. I got this 17 pounds. If you see anything cheaper than this, no, it's not the right one. Once you put it on the wig, if the wig is tangled, or your hair is tangled especially when you're if don't don't use this anymore don't use this anymore don't use this anymore especially when you're washing your wig now this is a lifesaver i just i got it and uh, if i knew it was that expensive let me tell you i wouldn't have bought it i went to the shop and i just picked it it's when i wanted to get it again i saw the price i'm like oh is it that expensive it is really good, okay? If you're using wig, even not wig, but I'm talking about uh, maybe something like this kind of hair is getting tangled, even coily hair, this will help you a lot. It's really the same thing, you can use either one. The only catch with these, like most things in life, is that you need to know how to use them. You are not allowed to be like your grandmother when you hand her your iPhone and she can't get it to work and she gets mad, she's like, ah, this doesn't work. When you use one of these, you aren't just gonna chuck it in your hair and flail it around. That's not how this works. You need to understand that when you're detangling, you want Gentle. to start from the bottom of your hair. Gentle. If you start at the top, you can get yourself in trouble. What happens is you have tangles all throughout your hair. 
And if you start at the top, you bring tangles down until it hits another tangle. And then you'll bring another one down until it hits that, and you'll end up with all these tangles getting stuck right on top of each other. Please don't do that because when you get that many all on top of each other, it makes it a lot harder to get them through, show you a much easier way. Instead, start at the bottom of your hair. The only way to get rid of a tangle is to brush it out through the ends of your hair. That's the only time it actually goes away. So by starting at the bottom, you never allow tangles to pile up. You get one at the bottom, take it all the way out, it's gone. Go up a little bit higher, Bring it down, get that tangle out Take of there, go back up to the top, and you'll slowly work your way through. Actually, it's not that slow. It's really quick. Just start at the bottom, don't start at the top. Much faster, much safer for your hair. Please try it out. But there's one brush nope. for detangling that I like even more than this guy, and it is called the Mason Pearson brush. This is hands down the best detangling brush on the market, but you should never ever buy this thing. I steer all my clients away from it. This is $240, which is just way too much to spend on a brush, especially if you're really good at losing expensive things like I am. It's all just- I have the white one. Oh my gosh. No wonder whenever I buy things from the shop, they're telling me 300 pounds, 400 pounds. What have I been buying? Let me show you the white one. This is it. Oh no, but not as big as this one. 200. I need to be hiding on my face now. Story they're telling you to justify charging $240 for a hairbrush. No, they can easily make this cheaper if they want to. If Elon Musk can take the price of a rocket launch from $4 billion all the way down to $10 million, you can... Let me tell you, I got this from, if you are maybe in London, I got it from Capital Beauty. But you have to either be a professional or you hire a business owner to buy things from them. I don't know. But when I registered with them, I showed my certificate. And uh, that is it, my level 2 certificate. Oof. These are expensive. Anyway, let's talk about why this is the best detangling brush out there. In terms of what it does, it's basically the same of the wet brush, but it's a little bit better at getting there. It detangles a little bit faster because it has more bristles and it feels smoother. One more thing is this. This brush is really good, but if you have like a wig, get this, okay? Because this one, I use it, but it's a little bit slow. This is really good, maybe, you know, like those coily closure, you know, sometimes the closure become tangled. So you take your time, you have to pull it out, bit, bit, everything will come out. It will take time. Your hair, again, because of more bristles. In the end, your hair will look exactly the same. It just gets you there a little bit faster, feels a little bit better in your hand. So. There's no way in good conscience I can ever tell you to pay $240 for minor convenience. But at the same time, these are very good quality brushes. They're built to last. I know people who have literally had them for 10, 20, 30 years. You can pass these down to a family member, they last. Let's move on to styling brushes, starting out with a teasing brush. This little guy is meant to help you get more volume in your hair. Teasing, or what some people call backcombing hair, is when you fluff the underneath of your hair up to create like a pillow effect where the hair has extra volume and height. That's a really nice way of saying that you create a rat's nest underneath your hair to give you extra volume. And I don't know why we're talking about rats so much today, I'm sorry. So when you're doing this, this can get a little messy and keep yeah. in mind, you're intentionally creating tangles when you do this, so you don't wanna get too crazy. It actually takes some skill to hide all the tangled hair underneath, so this is not a beginner thing. And remember, if you do this, A lot of people use it for styling. I only actually use it to do my uh, paddings. I don't use it for styling because it's hard to, to smooth in, so you don't want your hair to look like a mess. So let's move on to boar bristle round brushes. These are super interesting because at one time, all of the bristles on here were actually on a living boar. The only thing about these is I always feel so bad for the animal. And no, I'm just kidding. He's totally fine. They cut the hair off, wait for it to grow back so they can do the same thing again. No boars or pigs were harmed in the making of this video. No rats either. It's 
bar. These are supposed to give your hair extra shine, which is absolutely huge because everybody wants shiny hair. I first came up learning from Dominican salons because they're so good at getting hair smooth and shiny. That texture of hair is actually my specialty. I have more experience with that than any other type of hair. And trust me when I tell you not to even bother with more bristle brushes because it will get much shinier results with ceramic round brushes. This is really where it's at when it comes to round brushes. And keep in mind, the only time you're ever going to be using one of these is when you're blow drying your hair or, sorry, using the rat tail attachment on the back. So why do you need a round brush instead of a paddle brush like a wet brush? The answer is tension. What you're actually doing when you're blow drying is pulling the hair straight and sealing in that straight shape with heat so everything lays flat and smooth and shiny. Paddle brushes cannot hold tension to get the hair straight and smooth. If you ever see someone blow drying with a paddle brush, do not trust anything that they say. Not because they're liars or anything, just because their hair is perfect and it'll come out amazingly no matter what they do. Even if they're like Ariel and they use a fork to do their hair. We don't live in perfect hair world, so we can't do what the perfect hair people do it out. Your blow dryer actually heats up the inside barrel of this guy so when you wrap the hair around it the hair dries faster and smoother on that hot barrel. It's pretty cool. But whatever you do do not be like me the first day I ever tried. A lot of people with a kinky hair they use it but before you use it try and use the paddle brush the one I was talking about. We use that one kind of to loosen the the coils of the hair. Maybe you are doing like someone with mysteries, kinky hair. You use the powder brush first to kind of loosen the coils. Then before we use the ceramic one, it's just different. Round brushes only go one direction on your hair and that direction is down. Always keep moving this down. Never let it come back up. Usually when these get tangled, it's because you let the hair slack and it got caught up in the hair up here. And if you've already tried this and it seems like it's just too much, let me introduce you to the blow dryer brush. If you weren't able to get the whole pat your head, rub your belly thing down with a separate brush and blow dryer and different hands, this is gonna be amazing for you. These things make blow drying so easy now. I don't say this very often, but these make the world a better place. The only thing you need to watch out for is damage with these things. Because if you don't know a few basics, it's really easy to fry your hair. These are called blow dryer brushes. They are for drying hair. If you use them on hair that's already dry, it's gonna heat up really, really quickly and do a ton of damage. So do not use these on dry hair. And when you use them on wet hair, please stop. As soon as the section is dry, you'll feel it get warm. Stop, go to the next section. If you keep using this to go over and over and make it hotter and hotter, you're gonna do damage. Don't do that. Next up is Denman brushes. These are for people who like to wear their hair naturally curly. And natural curls, believe it or not, are like a separate world of hair. The strategies that you're gonna use are totally different than salon hair, starting with this brush. The way you use this brush is basically instead of your wet brush. When you're detangling your hair, a wet brush will basically knock all your curls out and get the hair straight. So these you don't want back. that. You want to use this guy. And what it does is it's almost like ribbons, like on Christmas, if you're ever curling ribbons with scissors. This basically goes through the hair, pulls in a certain way that lets you keep the curl and enhances your curl. Try this out. My co-founder really likes it on days that she goes. Like with curly hair, what I normally do with my client hair, you get the mousse, put it in your hand, get a little bit of eco styling gel, put it in your hand, get a little bit of serum, like the John Frida, one pump. Why am I doing this? You're making your own coil cream. This was a good one, and I hope you've learned a lot. You've learned how to use your brushes. I've learned a few things. Most of the things I already know it myself, and I hope you are going to, from now, know how to manage your wig, know how to use different kind of comb, and then uh, hope to see you in our next video. If you haven't yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Thanks so much and uh, bye!